Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I will be continuing on our Enemy AI mini-series. Um, I've already covered the chasing, the attacking, stuff like that. So now we are going to implement stats, health damage, stuff like that. So off screen I created more stats. So this is our AI stats and then I created one for players. I pretty much just duplicated it, added the new stats and attributes to the player class. So, continuing on from where we left off in our last two videos, um, we are going to make a mini combat system. Um, I've already covered this in other videos, but if you're continuing with the AI and you want a AI that fights back and can die, this is what we're doing. So. To start off, we are going to create kind of like a mini HUD, just a very plain HUD for our health. And I think I believe we already made one for the enemy's health over their head. So for us, I'm going to create an empty under our panel. I'm going to call this bottom panel. I'm going to add an image. I'm going to make it black, opacity of about 75. And let's change this to about 500 by 200. And we're just going to move it down to the bottom of the screen because it's our bottom panel. Okay. And within the bottom panel, I'm going to create another empty. I'm going to call this one health. I'm going to add another image to it. And let's see. We are going to make this one black as well. Have a opacity of about 100. The height, I'm going to go 50 by 400. And then I'm going to duplicate health, drag it into the actual health. I'm going to rename this one bar. And I'm going to highlight both of them and I'm going to add a image, a square to make it nice and easy. Going back to bar, we're going to turn this red at full opacity. We're going to change the image type from simple to filled. Radial 360 to horizontal. There's our health bar there. Now let's add some functionality to it. So under health, I'm going to add the attribute AI, UI, sorry. And we're going to add our player health stat or attribute I mean. And under image fill we're gonna add bar to it. So that's set up. Let's make sure our player actually has traits. No he does not. So we're gonna add traits to our player and we're gonna add the player class to it. As you can see our health is here. And let's see. I'm gonna add a couple tags here. So we already have damage 25. That's good. I'm gonna add we're not going to use that one. We're actually going to use a damage. We use damage five, and then we're going to add player damage fifteen. So the enemy will do five damage. We'll be doing fifteen. So we know we can win. All right, and under the player, I'm just going to create a trigger area. And we're going to create an empty under that called health damage. And let's see. We're going to add a trigger. On tag enter. Damage. Damage 5. We're going to. Stats. Change attribute. Player. Health subtract by 5. So anything with the tag of damage 5 that hits our player will damage us by 5. I forgot to add a box collider so let's do that. Box collider. I'm going to move it up. Turn it into a trigger. Size of 0.5 by 2 by 0.5. Just enough size for our player. So that's set. I'm also going to add another trigger. I'm going to do this one under the player, not trigger. This will be called death. And 
Twitter. And no. Run conditions. Add conditions. Drag them up. Add branch if stats attribute. If player health equals zero, then Oh, and this isn't going to be on star. This is going to be on attribute change. So if player health equals zero, then we are going to enter state and I don't have a state made yet. So I'm going to create one. animation state. We're going to call this one death. And we need an animation clip for that. I think one came in that warrior pack here. Yes. Here we are. Perfect. So on death so on player equals zero, we're gonna add that state to it now. And I'm also going to copy health damage, paste it in our enemies, and we're gonna change the damage five to player damage 15. I'm gonna make it subtract by 15 on the character and switch the stat over to their stat so AI HP there we go and then I'm also going to copy death and paste it under the character as a child switch over the the information here to the actual enemy There we go. And again down here. All right, so this is all set up for our characters now. So our health and damage is there. We just need our attacks to deal the damage. And if you've watched my other combat video, it's gonna be the exact same method so let's get into this real quick. I'm just going to add punch. I'm not going to use swords. This is the same thing applies to any weapon or fists, anything. So let's see here. Whoops. So for our enemy, I'm going to find the character's right hand. There we go. And under right hand, I'm going to create an empty called punch. And under punch, we're going to add a sphere collider, make it a trigger, and we're going to dumb it down pretty small. Something like that. Point 0.2. All right, and we're going to deactivate it. So now on the trigger we already have for the enemy, the combat trigger, under attack, we're going to slip in the set active to that punch. Actually, under punch, before we do that, I'm going to write a trigger in here. Trigger, on enable. We're going to wait 0.5 seconds. And then we're going to set self to false. So it turns itself off. Okay, so under the attack trigger now, we're going to set active somewhere to that punch. So I'm going to say right before the animation, set active punch to true. I'm going to save that. So our enemy is ready to go. Now I'm just going to do the same thing for our player. 
I'm going to copy punch. And I'm going to find player. Actually, sorry, we're not ready. I forgot to add the tag to this. So this is our player damage 5. Or not player damage, sorry. Damage 5 for the punch. Now I'm going to copy. I'm going to find our player's right hand. Now I'm going to paste as a child. We're going to switch this over to damage 15, player damage 15. Perfect. Now, what do we need here? We need an attack button now. So, I'm going to go back to our canvas. And we're just going to quickly add a empty called combat. Or combat panel, whatever you want to keep it nice and organized. So under combat, I'm going to add an image. So you know what, I'll just make this a button. This is a very basic tutorial, so I don't really need to go through the extra steps. So let's just make this a button. Okay, I'm just going to delete that. Panel, create, game creator, UI, button. Button text mesh pro, sure. We're going to rename this combat and drag it back under our panels hierarchy. So we're going to slide this down to here. I'm going to make this 150 by 150. We're going to delete the text and we're going to change the image. So this icon pack I have I know comes with a couple of weapon images so I'm going to use like a sword or something just for our attack or even a fist for our punch. If there is a fist, yeah, here we go. All right, this button is gonna do exactly pretty much what our enemy does in their attack trigger. I'm gonna see if I can copy and paste that or not. Um, attack, okay, never mind. We'll just do this from scratch, so. Our combat button, we will add instruction, we will... Okay, first we will... Stop, or no, speed... Change movement speed to 0.1. Set active, punch to true. Play gesture of her attack here. Where did that go? Right hand. And you can use whatever animation you want. Um, you might have to time your t punch trigger to be better. Like this will disappear after 0.5 seconds. So if your animation takes longer than that, and the collision disappears before your sword hits them, they won't take damage. So. This is pretty much where you control that, is under the punch. Anyways, back to this. We will play gesture, wait to complete, and then, whoops, we will change our movement speed back to four. All right, and that's a very basic, um, you know what? I'm also going to make our character rotate towards them, so, under AI combat when we enter the trigger we are going to rotate our character to look at the enemy character okay and then we're also going to copy that we're going to paste it on trigger exit and we're going to set our look to pivot done now this should be good to go. I'm going to change my movement type to just WASD for testing purposes. Actually better yet, I'm just going to make a quick cheat button to do that. So combat, I'm going to duplicate combat. 
We're just gonna move this up here or something. I'm gonna change the icon to like a pair of shoes or something, just so we know it has something to do with walking. Um, our feet feet work. Okay, so when we press this button, all this is going to do is change our input. Okay, save that. Let's play this now. Now, mind you, I haven't really polished these triggers, so after one of us dies, or say after I die, the enemy might continue to attack me. So, let's just test this. So yeah, he's punching me, my health is going down. I punch him, his health is going down. And after I kill him, he might still try and rotate towards me, because I didn't really do any of that. This is very basic what I just put in. Okay, so yeah, he's still trying to attack me, so I didn't turn off any of these triggers. So let's do that quickly. But we do know that works now. Um, let's see. So, on enemy death, let's change this up a bit. Go in death state, that's good. We're going to rotate to pivot on them so they're not constantly rotating towards us. We're going to set active to false to their triggers. Basically they're attacking and maybe that's enough, we'll see. Oh, also when they die, I'm gonna change the player rotation to pivot as well. Okay, let's try this out. I also forgot to change their radius to zero when they die because you might still get blocked by their course if you're trying to walk over it. There, so now they're dead. I'm gonna change that health to false too, and their radius to zero, and that's pretty much it for them dying. So radius, change radius of character, set to zero, and also we are gonna set the health to false. I'm just gonna set the whole canvas to false for them. And then we're going to wait, I don't know, say 10 seconds, and then destroy the entire character altogether. And that way, if you have, a, say, a zombie game where there's hundreds of them chasing you and you're killing them, the more they come, the more laggy your game is going to be if they just stay there, so this way they destroy themselves. So let's try this. And you can see how my character automatically rotates. I don't like how jittery the health bar is, so I'm gonna fix that. All right, they're dead. I can walk over them, no hesitation. I'm gonna change that camera clipping too, that's kind of annoying. All right, now they're gone. Save that there. I'm gonna go main camera. Let's see. Layer mask. Is it nothing or everything? I forget. I'm gonna try nothing. Yeah, okay, I think that's it. And you notice how sometimes the health will double damage? That's because my collision doesn't turn off fast enough. You can also write triggers where when the collision collides with, say, an enemy tag, it can set itself to false automatically, and that way you don't have to worry about double damage, anything like that. Alright, so we know he dies. Let's see if we die. On our death, we're also going to kind of do some of the same stuff here. So, death, rotate, enemy, There we are, and move them to 
to where they started, which would be the AI. I'm also going to set player input controllable and none. And I'm going to rotate our ourself as pivot as well so we're not rotating towards the enemy as we're dying I think that's it for the most part oh maybe uh, maybe we'll set active our combat to false as well all right and we just want to have this one at the end because this is a way to finish instruction so Let's try letting us, us die. Yeah, I just made it faster a little bit. Alright, so our character isn't exactly... So on our death, I'm going to set active to their attack to false. And we'll try that one more time. At least they stopped attacking us. And I mean, if you die, they, they really need to walk back. At this point, you're just retrying your map or level or whatever it is. So it doesn't really matter where they are after the fact. It works. We're going to go with this. Now it's just time to touch up a couple things, such as their health bar. So where is the trigger? Okay, here we are. Rotate self to camera. And we're going to rotate every... 0 0.01 seconds. Let's try that. Hopefully this health bar looks better now. Oh yeah, nowhere near as jittery as it used to be. It's still a little jittery here and there, but again, it's good enough to work for now. Little fine tunes on your end, you should be able to make it perfect. It might even be better if you rotate the canvas, not the panel. I don't know. What I do know is we pretty much got our basic combat system. Um, if you want like a little retry button, I'll do that real quick for you guys too. So we're going to add a, an image, UI image, black, 75, the scale, no the width, going to be about 500, 750 sorry by two no 400 yeah that works rename blue screen UI text mesh pro you lose now I'm just gonna move this up here and there I'm gonna center it out and change the scale and we're going to also cre create a button under Game Creator. This is going to go right here. Change this to black and about 100. There's a text in here. We're going to change this to white. I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to say retry. Now this button, we're just going to load scene. And whatever the scene is you're under, I'm under sample scene. So I'm also going to make a little wait of about 0.5 seconds in front of that. 
save and let's just make sure our scene is in the build settings there we go I'm gonna turn off loose screen and upon player death we will activate it so I'm just gonna move the character I'm gonna remove the move character wait one second set active loose screen save let's play this I'm dead I lose that's the lyrics I never turn that off when I die too but that wouldn't normally be there that's kind of a cheat button so retry and we're back at it it's also good if you have like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game you've pretty much made half the game right here and that's pretty much it for this video I'm not sure what the next video is gonna be um, but Hopefully soon I'll be able to get one posted. I've had some free time lately, so I've been doing this and working on another project of my own. Uh, kind of like a tactical shooter game that I'm making, but I'll show that in the next coming weeks. But for now, hopefully I can get another video posted soon. But that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, maybe leave a like if you're generous enough. And that's all for today. See you guys.